what is, what is the apple? And in this story, it's the story of Eve. She says that the gift of the apple is the gift of life. The chalice is the gift of the love of Adam and Eve, meaning that the gift of the womb is that Eve said to Adam, your love is so profound, your thoughts are so wonderful, you must allow them to be born. Now think about that. We've entered from a realm of eternal and timelessness into time. So the once grand cosmological fires you see of Kuan Yin that's been divided are no longer ever present. And if we think about that as a love story, right? Once we were Isis and Osiris. We were gods and goddesses who were aligned with the stars. And suddenly, we turn from this time of love into a time of separation. And that's what this journey will show us, that to understand who we are uniquely, and that's why we can move to where I just showed you the chalice, the sense of the movement into the chalice. We'll start to look down and see the blossom. We'll look down and see the mother. And we'll look over here, do you see? And we'll see the ancestors, the Maya. And they're looking back into a time of fire. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> this is what the ancestors know. We're the keepers of the records. Yeah. I mean, they really are. They are the keepers. The and this is the whole story. I mean, timekeepers. And, and the whole journey of Pahana, the lost white brother, interestingly enough, is this. We will keep this connection. You will go into the world, you see, on this great... Um, Exodus, you, you, will, you will take the journey of the world and you will return to the ancestors and your learned journey will finally have a basis in wisdom. And that's really where we look. Think of this story that this is all connected, right? So we're starting to see this journey of the mother and the father. And this is where it becomes even more curious and delightful because behind the blossom, you can see I'm holding the blossom, and for my physicists out there, and location and speed of the electron, this is suggesting that the location is the human story, but that the energy behind it is the lost knowledge, which isn't really lost, of the goddess, or Lilith, because she's here. <laughs> and nothing expresses the layered psyche better than that you see these are two qualities of oneness. That the one direction we see the purpose, the blossom, and on the other direction we see the roots, the energy. And these are both two qualities of the one. Now think about, in a visual language, this is the knowledge of the goddess, the time of the goddess. And why I say that is, mm -hmm. we saw the apple over there, now you see the apple over here, but you see it's over my family photo album. Mm. So we think about family. This is the capacity to see each other in generation and with love. This is the knowledge of the goddess. This is going to be very important because the sacrifice of the goddess is when we turn away from direct knowing. And this is also why Lilith is rejected and Eve becomes the wife of Adam. Both must be ignorant of their origins. Right. But Lilith is inside of Eve. She says that I will be the lioness that lives at the heart of woman as Eve will be betrayed by Adam. Because Adam will turn into self-reflection and on that hall of mirrors, on that journey, he will betray love over and over again. And so the question of this betrayal, and that's what's so beautiful here, is she says that now I want you to know that I have always been present but hidden until now. Because you cannot know your story until you realize that you are not on the horizontal, but on the vertical. You are trees. And the truth is, if you live in Malibu as a tree, you don't try to get to Santa Monica. And that's her point. She's going to say that I turn myself inward, and we'll do that literally, do you see? <laughs> and we will cover the family photo album. And the question became, even as a motion picture, well, why did we take this journey? And she says, well, take me with you. So we start to journey around the corner here. You see, and that's why this becomes so movable and moving. Because this space then shows us the two hemispheres. And you can see that, you see in the mirror, the journey of self-reflection. Ah, oh, yes. And when you look at this side, do you see the journey of the mother, of love? 
Now, we would not be aware that there's a division between the two questions, that love connects and thought divides. But the beautiful thing here is actually saying, now, we hold the story of our, you see, the, what we think of as alien, but it's really this greater self. The elongated head. The elongated head. Now, do you see it looks like a child in this? Yes. Again, innocent? Right. The quality here is in this innocence, in this ancientness, in this knowingness. We cannot, and this is the Lilith story, we cannot convince ourselves that we are separate. We know too much. So the question is, how do we create, quite literally, a smaller head? And take what was once in union and divide it as a right angle. And that's where you start to see this twin over and over again. As if to say the arc, like the two hemispheres, emerges, you see, from this greater vision when we hold that as a tree, and that's why Tor, I showed you earlier, mm -hmm. is saying you grow out of this root system, but this consciousness for you is incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. In other words, you cut it in half to slow it down and humanize it. But from a human context now, you have a access to this other quality. Mm -hmm. Which, as you know, think of the, the story here. If we're looking this direction, we can't see Lilith. This is a primary technology, which is very helpful because once we understand that, then when the, you say primary, like primal, almost. Or? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. because essentially we have been painting since we began. Right. Never to illustrate anything, but to create communion. Think of the dance, the improvisation of the hand, the sense of feeling the wood, feeling all of this that allows us to follow the grain to feel. Everything has these hidden patterns. And that's where we see the watcher language. I'm really allowing the rhythmic nature, not to illustrate anything, to rise more and more, to bring into focus. Like I had no idea Lilith was, there's no illustration mm. here. And that's why as I bring this out, do you see even the sense of like having it on cards, so to speak, and it will show us that you have been on this journey across the ages, gathering the story of what does it mean to be human? You came from the mother of light, you were drawn down into the mother of dark. You now bring these two qualities together, do you see? And one, like the painting, cannot see the other side of the other. This is why if we have this, it says, I want you to remember, like you can remember the downstairs is there, mm -hmm. even if we're not there. Remember so that your imagination allows you to connect that which you cannot see. And that's where she then comes out, as I say, and this is where the goddess the Ancient One returns home. That this knowledge can't be known except in the domestic space because that's the truth of lover and beloved. And that's why her revol evolution is, I will take you back to Atlantean knowing. I will take you back to the time of the Watchers. But I won't take you back there to leave. That's narcissism. That's telling me you're an ancient king and you don't need to be here because you're so important there. And this is the great terror of narcissism, is because Lilith destroys the illusion of the illusion. It's the hall of mirrors of the ego that are now, in a way, facing the creative spirit and that truth that, that the creative spirit isn't interested in your cosmology, but really interested in your, your willingness to do what she's saying, which is follow me into this great story.